Thank you very much. Yeah. what Civonomics is really about. I know that a lot of you have a lot of conceptions about what we are about, about what we're trying to do in our overarching vision, and a lot of you have come today on that alone and that, that feeling of trust alone without really knowing fully what you're getting yourself into. And so that's, that's what this presentation is really about, I'm about to give you is what does our company really stand for and what does this weekend really mean to us? Okay. So right away, Civonomics' core mission is to leverage the tools of the 21st century to create more participation with better information. Fundamentally, we believe in having meaningful interactions with pragmatic solutions. So we have two really things that we do as a company. We, one, have an online platform that makes it really easy for people to learn about local issues and engage in those issues and, and vote for the, the solutions that they feel that can improve their community and two, we have a full-time campaign staff of outreach personnel who will go to your community and engage you on a personal level. And I'll explain more about that as we move forward. Our overarching vision has been to create a one-stop shop for civic engagement that leverages these 21st century tools. And this is the spirit that is embodied in all of our products. And to kind of give you details about how we arrived at this vision, I'd like to take you on a little journey between our past, our present, and then where we're headed towards in the future. So when we were founded about two and a half years ago, we were immediately referred to by staff in the county as the iPad guys. Because we were the crazy ones who figured that we could develop a mobile app and actually go and talk to people about local issues, which is, I mean, it's been done obviously with a clipboard and the community organizing has been done in the past, but to take an iPad and go out there and actually talk to people was, it was an interesting thing. And sure enough, we started working with the Soco Creek Water District around one of the most complex and convoluted and controversial issues at the time, desalination and the, and the water crisis. And so we were able to take that tool and actually go out and talk to communities, whether it's at farmers markets or at venues like this, and get feedback from people. And we shortly expanded to the Bay Area to tackle a bunch more campaigns, going all across uh, to Oakland and Berkeley, and <coughs> really reaching a lot of people about issues that are really meaningful to them on a local level. We also like photo ops a lot, too. <laughs> so just to give you a sense of the true scope of what we've done in the past two years, a list of where we've been. We've been from San Francisco down to Santa Cruz to every incorporated city in the county of Santa Cruz, all up to Santa Rosa to Berkeley to Oakland. We've talked, about, or we've talked to people at schools, at churches, at community organization events, at farmers markets, going door to door, going to Sunday streets, going to First Fridays. We've been there, wherever there are people who care about what's going on. In terms of what we talked about, we've talked about everything from open space protection to climate action to homelessness to water issues like recycled water and desalination. I mean, we've been to these communities and talked to people over and over and over again. And in total, We've talked to over 7,000 people in two years using these interactive tools to get people more involved in their local community. So what are our three major takeaways that we've gotten from this kind of work? One is it's helped us develop a business model because when you go to that many people and that many groups and, and talk to people about what, what really matters to them, the way Fred talked about, you get a sense really quick that there is a definite need for more civic involvement, that people want this kind of interaction. They want a meaningful interaction that to them is going to be tangible. It's going to be real. They, they want to have that voice. And they've been so jaded for so long for so many different reasons that having that opportunity is, 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 is tremendous to them. Two, a novel way of, of broadening engagement. Using these tools, for instance, I can go up to someone's house and walk them through a series of projects taking them through an interactive tour of a scope of, for instance, a desalination plant or a recycled water plant, analyzing the costs and trade-offs of, of why this is important to people, and have them place like pins on a map to, to you know, 
pick out defined locations of like things that may be suffering from problems. I mean, these interactive tools change the game fundamentally. It becomes a two-way street of providing so much information and education level and getting so much feedback in a much more constructive way than was ever thought possible. I mean, I've been a community organizer since I was 14 years old in high school, and I dreamed of having the ability to actually walk you through an interactive tour of something I was talking about to make it that much more real to you. And three, it's helped us understand the importance of the human element. Civics fundamentally really is about trust. Again, it's, it's got to be tangible. It's got to be real. You have to feel like your voice matters. And going door to door, going out to a farmer's market, and going out and talking to people and feeling that meaningful and real interaction, that is important. And that's ultimately what this has inspired us to bring you all here for this weekend and what's inspired us to, to put on events like Sibonomicon. So I want to tell you a quick story about a man named Tom. So this is Tom. So I talked to Tom about a week ago doing door-to-door -door canvassing in Bernal Heights about green infrastructure in San Francisco. Now I'm not going to bore you about what green infrastructure is too much, but I'll still tell you that San Francisco sewer is over 100 years old, and they're still made of brick, and they're really old, and they're subject to a lot of problems. Green infrastructure is designed to help a lot of those problems. But it's, a, it's not the most approachable topic, and most people in here, I, I would say, with the exception of a couple of you, don't know what green infrastructure really is. But I'm able to actually come and talk to Tom and walk him through a series of projects that we had defined for his neighborhood, talk about the potential locations they might go, talk about the cost-benefit trade-offs of each project, and really walk him through to the point where he could feel like, oh yeah, I, I, I kind of get this. And as I was walking out of his house, and after we both said you know, our goodbyes, and I was walking down, down the stairs, Tom opens his door again and, and says, hey, you know what? That was the best door-to-door -door experience I've ever had. <laughs> and I wanted, he, he went on to elaborate, and I wanted to take a couple of key quotes there. One, I learned a lot. More so than I've ever learned from reading a passive newspaper piece, or getting a postcard in the mail, or taking an online <coughs> survey, or a survey by the phone. I mean, that to him was actually like sitting there, being able to ask questions, and have a meaningful encounter with someone else was, was really unique. Two, I felt like my opinion really mattered. And that if I took the time and energy to go through and teach him about what was going on in his community and, and teach him what different projects the SFPUC, a multi-billion dollar crazy bureaucratic agency, is considering for his neighborhood, and he's actually able to understand it, I mean, like, he feels, oh, wow, you actually took the time. My voice must really matter if you're going to put all this effort into getting my opinion. And then three, which is actually the most important part, is he said, you know, I felt like I just had a conversation with my neighbor. I didn't feel as if it was some larger force coming to kind of galvanize me into my larger scheme of what was going on, but it was just two people talking about what was important to the neighborhood. And that, that's what makes it tangible, that's what makes it real. So fast forward, um, April of 2013, about six, six and a half months ago, seven months now, we launched our online platform, which like I said before, makes it really easy to learn about local issues, have your voice heard and, and engage in a meaningful discussion where people can vote in, on the ideas that they can improve the community. Since then, we've had over 700 active members participating in these issues. We've had over 50 workshop topics published about these various issues from, from public safety to the water crisis to the climate action plan. We've got a lot of issues on there. But what to us is really interesting is that one in three people who had actually registered for a site contributed something. They contributed a comment, they contributed an idea or a resource, or participated in a discussion. And we're coming from the social media world, where we live by a rule called 80-20, where it means at any one given point in time, 80% of the people who are using your product or using your site are pretty much going to be what we call lurkers. They're not going to engage, they're going to kind of speak things out, but they're never really going to want to take that next step. The fact that we had one in three people that signed up for our site participate in a meaningful way and actually give some kind of contribution really validates what we're trying to do. People want to participate in this way. People want to learn. People want to engage. And they ultimately want to solve problems. Our most popular workshop thus far has been Improved Downtown Watsonville, which has been awesome for us. We've had, just in the past two months, over 145 unique posts on that workshop, with most of them receiving 45 plus votes. I mean, if you extrapolate that out, that's a couple hundred people taking a meaningful look at their town and saying, hey, I want to improve downtown. Here's my contribution. Here's about yours. And we were able, it was meaningful for us because we got to go and engage the human element. We got to go participate, and we got to go present our results at a live in-person workshop and meet the very people we had been talking to online. 
So today I'm actually really proud to announce something, another milestone in the Civonomics process, in that previously everything had been governed through workshops online. That you know, there's a defined series of challenges, and the whole goal is to try and you know get some feedback and solve some of those challenges. Well, now we're making an open object called the initiative object, which is where you can create a long-form proposal to address a community need, or if you have a pet project, or say you had that special magical bullet that's going to get us out of a water crisis, or you felt you had that missing piece of the homelessness argument, or you felt you had something but you had no outlet to get that out. This is your opportunity, we feel, to flesh it out. Tell us the who, what, when, where, and how of your issue. Tell us where it's been done in the past. If it's been done in Austin, Texas, if it's been done in Portland, you know, tell us the cost impact. Let us have a meaningful discussion about how we can solve some of these problems. The long form initiative is for anyone who's ever had something that they felt that, hey, I think this, this could really work. Why don't I have a chance or a platform to begin to make this case to the rest of the community? But you know what? It gets even better. Because at the beginning of next year, we're going to launch crowdfunding. Which means that not only are you going to have the potential to learn about an issue, meaningfully engage about what's going to work and what's not with other members of your community, but once you find that proposal that you think might be successful, you can actually fund it online. You can get the rest of your community members involved in that issue. And what we've seen, a major downfall in terms of crowdfunding as it exists today, you know, with Indiegogo and Kickstarter, is that 80% of the people who actually give you funds online are people in your direct network within one degree. So you, chances are you know them personally. There are, yes, there are of course those viral cases that get a lot of publicity and a lot of hype and you know, everyone wants to emulate those. But ultimately, it's, it's the people you know and how well you can make your case to them. To us, if we can tap into an existing community of people who already care about these issues, who already recognize the collective interest of the community as a whole and want to participate and want to give and want to help support these initiatives, this may be the way to actually transcend and get people to voluntarily say, hey, I want to support that. Whether it's new benches in the levy to help drive more traffic there and to make it more of a scenic environment, whether it's funding an after-school program that got cut in the recent round of budget cuts from the state, you know, these, these things happen. Or whether it's helping to raise, you know, a lot of money in a private-public partnership to help fund the rail trail. You know, I was floored about two weeks ago when a group of local alternative transportation advocates managed to raise over $100,000 in a matter of days to help put up money to make their case to the city council that we really care about this issue. There is a defined need for a place for people to make that case to the larger community. There's a defined need for a place to be able to fund these kinds of projects. If people really care about this and they really want to engage, they should be able to. It's about what's possible. And using these platforms, this technology, will hopefully make it more possible. But that's not all. We don't just want to enable crowdfunding for individuals. We want to allow crowdfunding for organizations, whether they be businesses, nonprofits, associations, institutions. We want people to be able to support the things they care about across the board. And not just the initiatives. Maybe you don't have a defined solution yet. Maybe you just want to fund the discussion. Maybe you just want to put money down and say, hey, I want to be, I want to support the people who support this, whatever they decide to be. So uh, coming in the next year, you'll be able to fund not only initiatives, but individual workshops, ideas. Almost every aspect of the site you'll be able to actually contribute money to and sponsor. So imagine a local solar company sponsoring a dialogue about, you know, local environmentalism or how we can, you know, better implement the climate action plan. Imagine a certain D-League basketball team funding an after-school program that helps kids learn about basketball. It seems pretty cool to me. But what's going to be amazing about this is it's not just going to be limited to what can be done in your local community. As you begin to grow, you begin to sponsor all these objects based upon not only where they're located, but also what category they are or you know what keyword they're using. So if you want to sponsor all the kind of environmental discussions going on in Santa Cruz, so be it. If you want to sponsor coastal conservation measures in some obscure zip code in Massachusetts, more power to you. If you want to sponsor labor issues in California as a whole, you can do that here. And that's what we're offering with our platform, and that's where we're going in the future. A one-stop shop to see what is possible. Because really, as a community, what does it mean to be a community? It means to collectively come together and realize our overarching principles and bring them to life. So really what Civinomicon is, to try and bring this all back, that's why you're all here in this room. Civinomicon 
like Esther said before, is, is a takeaway from a hackathon. Now, traditionally, the hackathons that I've been a part of, you come together with a kind of a vague idea of what you're going to do. You get together, there's designers, there's coders, there's you know, people who are good at business development, and you, you pick an idea like, okay, hey, we want to design this mobile app that's going to do X, Y, and Z. And you get a team together, and over the course of a weekend, you, you grind away for like 48 straight hours, oftentimes, without sleeping. And you build a prototype, or you build some designs, or you build something that shows, hey, look what we can do in a couple weekends, look what we can do. And you pitch it to the rest of the crowd, and some of those turn out to actually become cool businesses. I'll tell you two that are, came right out of a local hackathon, Hill Tromper, run by Tracy Hukiel and Eric Johnson, who are here in the space. They had a wonderful event at Hotel Paradox last night, and they killed it. And they got the National Geographic to come and sponsor and develop a new map. That's an awesome idea. That came out of a weekend, people. That's awesome. Another local, uh, another local story is EcoShift, which Tiffany Wise West is a part of. And it's a, it basically allows companies, larger companies, to evaluate their supply chains to lower their carbon footprint. That's awesome. That's a uniquely cool Santa Cruz thing that came out of a weekend of people with a concerted effort to make something happen, and they got it done, and they pitched it, and they got funding, and they did something out of it. That's great. That's what we're trying to do with Seven Omicom, but instead of building software, we're trying to solve problems. We're trying to critically engage with these issues that we all know and have to deal with every single day, whether it's the roads you drive on, the water you drink, where you get your power, the social services that are administered through your tax dollars. These are critical issues, and we want to give you the voice. And this is the weekend where you can put those ideas out there. We want to give you the platform to do that. And at the end of Sunday, we hope to have a series of long-form initiatives that we can turn to the community that will get you know, a couple hundred, maybe even a thousand people to look at them. But that's a platform that never existed before. So just to get down in depth, starting tomorrow, we hope that you all sign up for topic groups, which are being facilitated by wonderful members of our county and city staff, as well as some elected representatives. These people are all experts in their field. They all have a series of defined challenges that they definitely need help addressing, and they're going to engage you with these. And we want you to think of some cool new ideas, or offer some fresh perspectives about how to solve these problems, and put them online so that everyone who's not at the event, everyone who can't be here tonight because they have whatever else they need to do, whether you have the flu or you have kids or a lot of things to do in life, who can't be here so that they can still go online and weigh in on those issues, vote on things, and, and feel that they have meaningful participation going on. Starting Sunday, or yeah, starting Sunday, yeah. After we fill out these workshops, after people have gotten a sense of what are the defined challenges our community needs to face and kind of brainstorm some quick ideas, we want you to run wild. We want you to take one of those ideas and we want you to bring it to life. Again, fill out the who, what, when, where, and how about your idea. Where has it been done in the past? How much is it going to cost? Who are you going to work with? You know, where is it going to go if it's something physical? And these are all questions that are viable that we can collectively answer together if we all recognize that a common interest in solving these problems. So we're giving the platform, come Sunday, come Saturday and learn about the issue, come Sunday, make your case for why your idea might make it and help improve this community. So thank you. And have a great weekend.